So now we know that uh, the first central processing unit, digital central processing unit was made in 1945 and the computer which used that uh, central processing unit uh, was uh, ENIAC. Now in that central processing unit, uh, the main components used uh, were vacuum tubes. Later on, after, after that, uh, after the development of semiconductor devices, the vacuum tubes of the central processing unit uh, were replaced by semiconductor devices. And those type of central processing unit came in the market in mid uh, 50s. After that, uh, after the invention of uh, integrated circuit, now the discrete semiconductor devices of the of central processing unit. Uh, were replaced by integrated circuits and those type of central processing unit uh, which were having a number of integrated circuits came in the market in mid 60s. Later on with the advancement of electronic industry uh, in 1971 Intel company was successfully fabricated the whole logic of central processing unit inside one integrated circuit and that integrated circuit is called as microprocessor. So now, now we will discuss about the evolution of microprocessor uh, and in this discussion uh, we have we will discuss discuss about the processors of Intel company Though there are many other uh, companies who are in the field of this uh, manufacturing of this microprocessor like uh, uh, Motorola, Texas Instrument, AMD. So, but we will confine to uh, Intel company processors. So, as already we discussed that 4004, this was the first microprocessor which was made by Intel company, even first uh, in the world and Intel company made this processor. So part number, they, they gave the name to that processor 4004, the name was 4004. So it was uh, uh, designed in uh, and manufactured in 1971. So that was first microprocessor manufactured by Intel company. So this microprocessor was having data bus of 8 bit and the internal architecture of this processor was uh, sorry 4 bit data, data bus and the internal architecture was also 4 bit now, now the meaning of internal architecture is the arithmetic and logical unit which was there inside this processor inside this microprocessor uh, was able to perform the arithmetic and logical operations over 4 bit data and uh, various registers, general purpose registers which, which were there inside this microprocessor were of 4 bit uh, length that's why its internal architecture was 4 bit and data bus was also 4 bit uh, so in, in one cycle it can uh, it can read or it can write 4 bit of data to or from uh, memory or I.O. devices. Now the address bus of this processor was 10 bit. So if address was, bus was 10 bit then the maximum memory capacity was 1 kb, 1 kilobyte. The operating frequency uh, for this processor was 1 megahertz. Right? So, we have to apply a clock signal and, and all the internal hardware of the processor uh, has to be synchronized with the reference to some clock. So here the clock which, which was used for the synchronization purpose of internal hardware of the microprocessor. So maximum clock frequency we can apply for uh, 4004 was 1 megahertz. And the package was deep dual inline package. So this, this type of package is called as dual inline. So uh, this side there are pins and 
that side there are pins. So this is dual inline package. And total number of pins of 4004 processor, 16 pin, right? So in uh, actually uh, here you over this IC you can find a notch here, right? A notch here, and there is one dot here. So the pin number one. Uh, to find out where is the pin number one, you just first find out where is the notch. So this side you will find notch and this side there will be no notch. Right? It is plain. So you just identify the, uh, the surface where there is a notch. Then near the notch you will find one dot. So dot you will find this side. right? So here you will find pin number one. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So 8 pins here, then 9 pin, pin will be just up to opposite to last pin here, this side, 9, 10, 11 like this, uh, here it is 16 pin. And the technology used to manufacture the electronic inside this processor was PMOS technology. Now uh, after 4004, Intel released another processor named as 8008 and this processor they uh, they launched in 1972 just after one year of first processor and the data bus now what they did they increased the data bus here now the data bus is uh, 8 bit so this was the first 8 bit microprocessor <coughs> see if uh, suppose you want to perform uh, addition operation over to 8 bit numbers and the data bus and the internal architecture of the processor is uh, 4 bit then what will happen to bring first 8 bit number processor has to perform two operations right first it will bring uh, 4 bits uh, from that 8 bit data and it will store inside the processor. Then it will retrieve uh, another remaining 4 bits and it will store inside the processor and then it will perform the uh, operation addition or whatever they want. So it requires here at least 2 clocks to bring the data, uh, 8 bit data, right? But if the, if the data bus is of 8 bit, then in one clock itself all the 8 bits uh, processor can uh, retrieve right it can bring the data from the memory all the 8 bit in one second so in this way if we increase the data bus and if we increase the internal architecture from 4 bit to 8 bit then the speed of the operation of the processor will increase so here this second microprocessor which Intel launched in 1972 they double the data bus so for 4004 it was 4 bit and now it is 8 bit and the address bit address bus also they increased so for for 4004 it was 10 bit and now it is 14 bit so the direct implication of the address bus is if you increase the address bus then uh, the maximum memory capacity which we can attach with the processor will also increase Right? So with, with the increment of one address line, the memory capacity will double. Right? So uh, for 4004 uh, address bus was of 10 bit and the maximum memory capacity was 1 kb. So if the address bus is of 11 bit, means we have increased one address bus, 1 bit, then memory will double, means it will become 2 kb. And if the address bus will become 12 kb, uh, 12 bit, then memory memory will again double. From 2 kb, it will become 4 kb. And now, if the address bus will be increased to 13 bit, then the memory capacity will be increased to uh, now it is 8 kb. So now, if the address bus is of 14 bit, so the maximum memory capacity of this processor is 16 kb. Now the operating frequency. 
ऑपरेटिंग फ्रीक्वेंसी ऑफ दिस प्रोसेसर वॉज जीरो पॉइंट टू टू जीरो पॉइंट एट मेगा हर्ट्स एंड पैकेज इज अगेन सेम टाइप डीप डेल इन लाइन पैकेज एंड नाउ द पिन नंबर आर इंक्रीज राइट पिन नंबर आर इंक्रीज नाउ इट इज एटीन पिन एंड टेक्नोलॉजी सेम टी मॉस टेक्नोलॉजी दिस दिस इज अ फिगर ऑफ एट जीरो जीरो एट प्रोसेसर सो हेयर इट इज रिटर्न एट जीरो जीरो एट राइट and this i is a symbol of intel right so here they have written one so this processor they they launched this 808008 processor in the market in two versions right? 80081 and 80082 like this now after this uh, in 1972 so after two years of uh, launching of 8008 they launched another processor 8080. So for this data bus is same as uh, previous one 8 bit, but they have increased the address bus. Right? So in previous 8008 address bus was of 14 bit, and the maximum memory capacity was uh, 16 kb. But now they have increased the address bus from 14 bit to 16 bit. So now the maximum memory capacity will be now at uh, 64 kb. The operating frequency of this processor was two megahertz to three megahertz, and package still they have used deep package, but now the number of pins are forty. So see here this processor uh, C eight zero eight zero, right? And these are the pins. So here this is a notch, and here they mark this sign, which indicate this is pin number one. So one, two, twenty. This side and twenty-one to forty. This side. And now they have changed the technology. Now the technology is NMOS. Now in NMOS technology, uh, the one benefit is it has a better packaging density because the mobility of electrons are double than the mobility of Holes. So in PMOS technology, mainly holes were used for the conduction of current, and now in NMOS electrons are used. So now, uh, since the mobility of electrons are double than the mobility of holes, so to achieve the same uh, speed of the operation as PMOS device, NMOS device will have. the half uh, channel length right the device will have a dimension which will be half of the pmos device that's why uh, the size of a smaller size and mos can achieve the same speed of the operation as the pmos right so uh, more number of now transistors can be packed in the same area to achieve the same speed of the operation as compared to pmos So in this way, the packaging density is increased in case of NMOS. So after this, now after two years of uh, that uh, last processor in 1976, Intel launched a processor uh, that is 8085. Eight zero eight five. So this processor is very much popular. Even today, uh, in institutes, uh, they just uh, teach this processor architecture and uh, programming and everything about uh, the instruction set to the students. Because if you want to learn the processor, then Uh, this is my personal opinion that we should we shall start with 8085 because our all the concepts uh, will become very much clear and crystal when we go through 8085 processor okay so this processor intel launched in 1976 data bus was same 8 bit address bus 16 bit maximum memory capacity 64 kb operating frequency is now increased from 3 to 6 megahertz and package 
deep type of thinking and technology and mass. So this is uh, 8085 processor. Now after 8085 processor, uh, 8086 processor came. And this processor came in 1978. Now this processor uh, was 16 bit processor. So data bus was of 16 bit and the internal registers of this processor was 16 bit and the arithmetic and logical unit uh, was able to perform the arithmetic and logical operation over 16 bit of data. So this was 16 bit processor and now they have increased the address bus. In 8085 uh, address bus was 16 bit but now the address bus in case of 8086 processor is 20 bit. Now with 20 bit address bus uh, we can connect now 1 megabyte of the memory with this processor. Right? So maximum memory capacity uh, becomes now 1 megabyte and operating frequency is 5 to 10 megahertz. So 8086 processor Intel launched in three versions, right? 8086, then 8086-1 and 8086-2. Then 8086 uh, basic processor, uh, the operating frequency for 8086 basic processor was 5 megahertz. Then uh, for 8086-2, it was uh, of 8 megahertz and 8086-1 uh, the operating frequency was 10 megahertz <coughs> and package is still deep 40 pin package so this is 8086 until they launched in 1978 so see here there is a notch there is a notch and here there will be one small dot so this is pin number 1 pin number 420 then here pin number 21 and pin number uh, 40 now after 8086 Intel launched 80186. This is 80186. So in year 1982. Now the internal registers of 80186 was virtually exactly same as 8086 processor. And one thing additional they included here that in case of 8086 processor to generate a clock uh, which will be used for the synchronization of internal hardware operation to generate the clock one external oscillator was required but now with 80186 uh, they build that internal oscillator inside the chip so in this case no uh, no external oscillator is required so it is now the part of the chip now right so it, it replaces the external clock generator which was required with 8086 to internal clock generator. Now data bus is same 16 bit but now address bus again they increased from 20 to 24. Now with the 24 bit address bus now people were able to connect maximum 16 MB mem memory. Right? Maximum 16 MB memory. And the operating frequency was 6 in the range of 6 to 25 megahertz and package now uh, this processor was launched in different packages one package was having 68 pins and the pa package type was uh, pin grid array right in in short it is written as pga pin grid array so this is this is a diagram of pin grid array type of uh, package so uh, what happened uh, here at the bottom side, right? This is the bottom side where you, you, you are seeing this pin. So, at the bottom side, uh, there are pins, right? These are the pins. They are arranged at the uh, just at, around this area of this IC, and then after this, there is another layer of pins. Then, after this, there is another layer of pins. In this way, and they arrange the pins and this type of arrangement is called as pin grid array and total uh, there were 68 pins right actually when the number of pins 
or more, then dwelling line package is not efficient. Is not efficient. So it is better to go with PGA or the second second is QFP, quiet flat package, right? It is of hundred pin. So here I have taken this image of some other Atmel processor just to detect how how QFP package looks like. So here what happened? This is this is your main uh, IC area, and the pins are arranged at the periphery of these uh, this IC, right? At the periphery of this IC, they they are in these pins. So this is quite flat pack. So uh, for 8086, quite flat package came with 100 pins. And technology now they used H MOS technology. We have N MOS with the N channel uh, was there. Now after 80186, now in the same year, right? In the same year they launched another processor, and that was uh, 80286, right? So this 80286 processor was contemporary to 80186. In the same year they launched uh, this second one also, and this 80286. Uh, uh, is the advanced version of 8086 and uh, the specialty of this processor was it was especially designed for multi-user environment like networking type of environment right where there is one uh, server after that there are four five clients so in that type of environment if we want to work so for that particular application this processor was especially designed and uh, another important thing is it executes instruction in less number of clocks as compared to 8086 processor. So virtually the registers, internal registers are similar to 8086, uh, but they have increased some something so that it can be used in multi multi uh, processor type of environment. And it executes instruction in fewer clock cycles than 8086. Now data was 16 bit. Address was 24 bit just like 80186 and maximum memory capacity 16 MB, operating frequency 6 to 25 megahertz and package again, uh, again uh, two type of packages are there, same pin grid array 68 pins and uh, quite flat package 100 pins. So this is the diagram of 80286. So it came in uh, 1982. Now after 80286, Intel launched another processor uh, that is uh, 80386. This processor they came, uh, it came in market in 1985. Now here they, they increased the data bus. So again all the previous processor data bus was 16 bit. But here they doubled the data bus. Now it is of 32 bit. So this was uh, uh, first processor. Here, uh, by mistake, I have written 8 bit. This was first 32 bit microprocessor which, which was launched by Intel right? in 1985. Now, address bus again they increased from 24 to 32. So, with the 32 uh, bit address bus, now the maximum memory capacity is 4 GB. Now, we can connect 4 GB memory with this processor. And the operating frequency also increased 20 to 30 megahertz and package. Still two packages, PGA and uh, quite flat package, but number of pins now increase, right? So uh, from 68 in previous in case of PGA, now it is 132, and from 100 of QFP of the previous processor, now it is 132. And technology is CMOS, where C indicates uh, complementary, right? Complementary MOSFET. In case of complementary MOSFET CMOS, the power consumption uh, will reduce, right? The power consumption will reduce because uh, we are using NMOS and PMOS both uh, to implement the logic, right? So now, and this is a uh, figure of 80386, right? Intel uh, 386 processor, right? So this is A80386 DX. So actually, they launched another 80, another 80386 uh, also with the name of SX, that was cheaper than uh, this DX. Okay. Now, after 386, 
Intel launched another processor, uh, 8046, and this they launched in 1989. So here data bus is 32-bit, address bus is 32-bit, maximum memory capacity 4GB. Uh, uh, okay, 4GB. Then operating frequency is now 16 uh, to 100 megahertz. And package PGA, now number of things are 168 and uh, quite flat package is 196 and technology is CMOS and this is uh, 486 so it came in 1989 now after this they launched the processor Pentium now actually uh, this processor was launched in 1993 and this was first 16 bit processor where the data, data bus was of 16 bit Right, data bus was of 16 bit. Actually, when they manufactured this processor, then initially they 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 had planned to launch this processor with with the name of i86, right, or i586, because uh, till last processor the up to 804486, they launched the processor by the name like 8086, 80186, 80286, 80386, 80486. But after 80486, the, the, the first they saw, thought they will launch 80586. But in place of 80586, they changed the name to Pentium. So why they did that? Actually what happened? Uh, 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 there was a processor 80486. So the company AMD, right? The AMD company, what they did, they also launched their another processor in the market and with the name 486AM. In, uh, uh, just before 486, they have written AM. So you can this is AMD. But in the market, there was a confusion in the customer, right? They feel that this uh, 486 of AMD, right? This is also the same processor made by Intel company. So uh, people from other companies, they were using the same type of name which was the name of Intel processors. So Intel company, they approached the uh, law, uh, the court of USA and they gave an application to register the trademark of 486 or 586 like that. But court rejected their application because they said that numbers cannot be considered, considered as a trademark. So any company can use the numbers, right? So then they thought just to prevent the other companies to get the benefit of uh, the, uh, the, 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 uh, the processor of the 80 of Intel company, then they thought, okay, we will change the name. That's why they launched the processor with the name Pentium, right? So that's why Pentium came in the this name came in the came in the market in 1993, just to prevent the other companies to manufacture a product and give the name just like Intel processors, right? So in this way, this processor came and after that Pentium one, Pentium two, Pentium three like that they launched with this processor. Now this Pentium is a trademark; it is registered with Intel. So no company can use the name Pentium. Whereas if they launch a processor 586, then any other company can also launch their processor, you know, they can give the name 586 and with AM or YM something they can write there. So that's why they, they use this Pentium and they discarded the name that number system, they use the numbers in the processor like this, they discarded that also. Right? So this is the history of evolution of the processor and we have taken the example of this Intel processor. 